Hello, my name is Kelly Casey, and I am a victim of corruption with the Guthrie, Oklahoma law enforcement and judicial system. James Richard Casey, also known as Rick or Ricky Rat, has been an informant for Guthrie, Oklahoma law enforcement for at least 20 years. He has over 36 convictions of crimes, including assault and battery on a police officer, I got aggravated assault and battery against me, running a chop shop, 14 counts of possession and distribution of narcotics, possession of paraphernalia, leaving the scene of an accident, and countless convictions for DUI and other alcohol-related offenses. Ricky has also been to prison five different times, each sentence for 10 to 25 years, and has served less than two years for each sentence. He has been on probation or parole literally since 1988. He has spent his life as a dangerous career criminal who knows that all he has to do is give up a name of someone else, anyone else, and he receives a lesser sentence. He legally hides behind the skirts of Guthrie, Oklahoma law enforcement and court officials. He is protected. I know this because I was his wife for nine years. When I left him for obvious reasons, he stopped me and my family for five years. He camped out on my sidewalk and followed me everywhere I went. The police did nothing. Even though I lived right next door to the Logan County Sheriff's Department, the Sheriff's Department claimed it was not their jurisdiction. The Guthrie police claimed that technically the sidewalk was not, was not private property. They left him there. He vandalized the family friend's car and paid cash for the repairs to convince our family to refrain from calling the police. He took my kids, nine and four years old, to the local bar. They came home telling me about the fun they had playing shuffleboard and eating Cheetos. He was investigated for child abuse and found innocent after a 10 minute interview with Child Protective Services. My daughter had to complete a year of psychotherapy and was still forced to visit her abusive father. One day at a local celebration of the town's heritage, Ricky attacked me verbally as he followed me and my sister to our car. When he started to become physical, onlookers found, onlookers found the chief of police, Damon Devereaux, patrolling the event. When Damon arrived, he had Ricky pour his beer out, promised to leave me alone, and he let him go. Ricky again camped out on my sidewalk that night. I had to pick my girls up one day because Ricky refused refused to bring him home. When I arrived, it was apparent that he was intoxicated. I rushed the kids to the car, and as we were pulling out of the driveway, Ricky tried to hit me through the window. Luckily, he missed. In another incident, I had to call 911. Ricky was intoxicated and trying to break into my house. The lady on the other end of the line had to clarify that the sound he was, she was hearing was him kicking my door and yelling threats at me. By the time police arrived, he was gone. I filed a statement and heard nothing from it. According to his court records, he was arrested that night for aggravated assault and battery, but I was never informed and he received probation. In 2006, he robbed my boyfriend by kicking in his door. That appears to be his MO. Police took a statement, did nothing, and Ricky called me that night boasting about the robbery. He, we uh, informed the police, and again, nothing was done. By 2011, we were fed up. After years of his harassment, my family and I decided to move to Colorado. After informing Ricky of our decision, my home was immediately raided by the police. They claimed that they received an anonymous tip reporting a large amount of traffic coming and going from our residence. Remember, Ricky works for them. The search warrant stated that police were looking for guns, scales, ledgers, large quantities of money, and narcotics. They found a joint in my coat pocket, held it up, and boasted, see this? This is what we're looking for. I have been on chemotherapy. I occasionally smoke small amounts of marijuana to control my residual pain. Unfortunately, even medical marijuana is illegal in Oklahoma. My new husband and I were taken to jail and released within four hours. It was obvious shock among the police as we walked out the door. We are not drug dealers. We don't even drink or use recreational drugs. Ricky has been bragging about calling the district attorney to have our house raided ever since. He still, we still lost our case 
No surprise, considering the assembly line circus of a court system we were thrust into. At this point, we were definitely ready to move. As we were loading the moving van to leave for Colorado, our court official appeared with a subpoena to appear in court again. Ricky was making one last desperate attempt to keep me from moving. I did not know how anyone is able to have the court serve a subpoena on demand, but he followed the official from the courthouse and yelled at me, you've been served, bitch, as he watched from his car. The next day, we left. We couldn't wait. I returned to court a month later, and this time, I won. I had full custody, and I offered him half the summer for visitation. The judge asked Ricky what the problem was, and he was very irritated and stormed out of the courtroom before the judge had even dismissed us. Through all of this, the local police, social services, and court officials continued to enable Ricky's relentless criminal behavior. He belongs in prison. He is able to manipulate the entire system in favor, in his favor, and he has received over 70 years of sentencing on his crimes, yet has actually served less than five. How is this justice? My husband and I were required to pay back the community more for our misdemeanor than Ricky has had to pay back to the community for his federal crimes. Something has to be done. This isn't right.